Welcome to Abstract Painting with Ashley Coons. Today we are going to be creating one of my favorite kinds of paintings. And I'm starting here with just this aqua green paint. And I'm making sure I get all the areas on the canvas covered very well. Um, at least the upper part of it. The lower half of it is going to be filled in a little bit later. You'll be able to see that. To apply this aqua paint, I am using a very wide flat paintbrush. This one is from Liquitex, it's from their freestyle collection, but any paintbrush will work to do your background here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I zoomed in here so that you can see I am trying to make this have kind of a more textured looking background. So as the paint is drying, I'm moving my brush around and painting in a lot of different directions because I don't want it to look too smooth for this. Next I'm going in and that is some gold leaf or metal leaf adhesive and I know you can't see it on the canvas right now but I'm just painting a generous layer of that adhesive onto the canvas. I should also mention that I let that aqua paint dry completely before going in with the adhesive. And I'm sure you can tell that it's even hard for me to see where the glue is applied. You can see a little bit of a reflection from where the light from my box lights hit. But once it starts to dry, it gets really difficult to see it. Now I'm going in with my gold metal leaf. And as you can see, it's um, kind of flaking off as I'm trying to put it on. This metal leaf is kind of old and it's been beat up just a little bit. So it was a little harder to apply. Um, when I apply my metal leaf, I like to use the wax carrier sheets that most of them come with. If not, wax paper will work just fine. I find that if the metal leafing is on the wax paper, it's a lot easier to put it where you want to and it doesn't float away and tear quite as much. So I am pressing the metal leaf into the adhesive and then I'm rubbing on the back of that carrier sheet, that wax paper just to make sure it's sticking everywhere it needs to. And then here I'm just taking little pieces that aren't glued down and moving them to areas where I know that I still need metal leaf. So my glue ended up drying very quickly and in just a moment here you're going to see I'm gonna kind of start rubbing right there on the canvas just to get some of those bigger flakes of metal leaf off and then also to make sure that everything is pressed down really well wherever there's glue and for this project I didn't want the metal leaf to be absolutely perfect so that's why I'm rubbing on it so soon after applying it typically I'd let the metal leaf dry completely and then I would go in with a brush and I'm using a brush right here just to clean up all of those pieces that aren't glued down but um, because I really wanted a rougher appearance on this I didn't do and now I've grabbed my favorite tool. It is the Princeton Catalyst Wedge. And I'm applying, um, I believe this was like a fluorescent magenta color onto the canvas. And I'm using that wedge to scrape the paint and manipulate it and create some areas where there's a little bit heavier paint and then some lighter paint. I'm using the edges of the tool to create some really sharp edges um, in the paint. And I'm just kind of going um, all around that lower half of the canvas. I want this painting to kind of look like waves. And so that's why I'm using that kind of a movement. And next I've grabbed a violet purple. And I'm adding a little bit of that in there with that magenta. And now here I've grabbed a kind of a rougher paintbrush. This is a really old one. And before the paint is dry, I'm going in and just brushing over it to give it more of a wispy effect on some of the areas. Again, same thing like with the metal leaf when I put that on. Um, I'm not going for solid perfection on this. I want it to be a little bit more light and airy and not so rigid. So that's why I'm using that paintbrush like that. And here I just zoomed in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Um, again with an uh, older paintbrush and just kind of brushing it around a little bit. 
I realized that this angle gave me better lighting, so I did it that way instead. And then here's a little close-up. I added a little bit of that aqua green from the background, and I am painting that onto the lower half as well. Just kind of filling in some of those white spaces. As I'm adding that aqua color, I want to mention that the purple and the magenta colors, they are still a little bit damp, so that aqua blended in just a little bit, which was just fine with me. That's what I wanted. And now here you can see I'm going over that, that gold leaf with that aqua color. And in doing this, I'm kind of incorporating that background into the foreground and making everything feel very cohesive and, you know, one. Now I'm going in with a dark blue paint, again with my Catalyst Wedge, and I'm using the wedge, sometimes I lay it really flat against the canvas, and when I do that I get a lot more paint left on the canvas. A lot of times I'll also just use the edge of the wedge. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but um, that kind of helps me scrape some of the paint away so that you can see some of those layers underneath. Here I'm taking a stencil and a can of acrylic spray paint and this stencil is like little dots so it almost looks like little bubbles and I'm just picking a few areas to add those little dots. One thing, um, my paint wasn't quite dry yet so when I take the stencil away up there I had a little area where I had some paint transfer from the lower half so I did clean that up later on. I don't know if I filmed that or not but now I'm adding some brighter blue and adding more waves into it. And I like to mention that I do a lot of these things, um, like, you know, adding the spray paint and sometimes using markers and stuff like that. And now I'm adding a little bit more gold leaf. So I do a lot of things repeatedly throughout my canvas, like in multiple layers, because I want everything to feel like it's very um, cohesive. And I feel like by doing you know, like the metal leaf at the start, and now I'm adding little chunks of metal leaf throughout on top of more layers. That just helps kind of hold everything together and make it really seem like it's one, if that makes sense. And when I'm applying this metal leaf right here, I actually just stuck it to some of the paint that was already wet on the canvas. I didn't go in and grab the adhesive. It, I kind of wish I would have because a lot of it really didn't stick very well. Um, but that's okay because I didn't want it to be like bam in your face kind of gold. I wanted it to be more like little flakes throughout. So that's what the end result ended up being. So I guess I got what I wanted by doing it this way. But typically I would use my adhesive that comes with the metal leaf that you can buy for it. So here I just grabbed a paint marker and I'm drawing little squiggles. Not really thinking too hard. As you can see, I've got my fan going to help dry some of the paint layers. So I've got some metal leaf just blowing in the wind there. I don't know why I didn't cut this little part out where I'm trying to zoom in, but we're going with it. So now I just have my old toothbrush that I use for painting, and I put some gold fluid acrylics on it, and I'm zooming in again, moving it around. Sorry, this part got so messy, but um, here's a better look. I'm splattering some gold paint on there. I almost like to think of it as like, um, like the spray of water on the beach or like the waves crashing together in that water spraying and now most of my paint is dry that gold leaf is dry so I'm brushing away the extra gold leaf on the canvas and I'm blowing just to get some of those pieces out of the way now I'm taking more of that aqua color that we used in the background incorporating it into like the foreground Again, using my catalyst wedge and varying amounts of pressure. I find that this, um, taking that background color and adding it to, you know, the main part of the painting really helps to 
blend everything together so it all feels like one. And then this is my favorite spray paint. It's a texture spray paint and it makes me feel like Spider-Man, like I'm shooting spider webs everywhere. Um, <laughs> and here I'm going in and just darkening up some areas again with another very dark blue paint. So as you can see, this bottom half of the painting really takes a while. It adds, I add a lot of layers. And now I'm going in with a brush and just dry brushing some more vibrant colors on areas. So with this one, I have a like neon fluorescent hot pink color. And I'm just dry brushing some of that on to brighten up some areas. And then I'm going to take a little bit of red here in a minute and I'm adding red. That's the red. Just to create a little bit more depth and dimension in my waves. I feel like it really enhances it. And I'm going to do that throughout the whole painting with a bunch of different colors. Here you can see I'm using like a darker purple. I'm just kind of creating a wispy effect with that brush. And I'm really trying to focus on areas like that have a little bit of the white background showing through here. So those get darkened up. And adding another layer of the aqua color because it is my favorite color and I think it looks really nice. Finally, I am signing my painting. So to sign the front of my paintings, I always just do like a little symbol. So it looks like I'm drawing a diamond there, but you can see the top half of it is an A, and then I draw a little dot, and then that line there at the bottom makes a laying down K. So the A, K for Ashley Coons. Um, I used to sign my full name on paintings, like Ashley Coons, or I used to do A Coons. However, I always felt like with an abstract painting having like a name written on there plus I have really sloppy handwriting it just never felt like it belonged on the painting so that's when I came up kind of with that logo so that's how I sign my paintings I do sign the bottom typically with like A. Coons or Ashley Coons and put the year and stuff so here I'm just showing you some close-ups um, and zooming away so that you get a better idea of what the painting looks like once it's finished and you can really see the texture spray paint like the spider webs you can see all the different layers of paint and the spray paint that i put on there and you can see the reflection in the gold leaf so um the gold leaf is just absolutely beautiful i, I know i've already said that but it's my favorite and then here are a few close-up shots and um then in a moment you'll see the final painting so i want to thank you for watching if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and you can shop my artwork at etsy.com backslash shop backslash Ashley Coons art. And thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe.